Hi everybody, I'm just going to race through a few charity shop vinyl finds, a few rare and interesting things. This is John Martin's Piece by Piece, a truly appalling album from 1986. Um, or is it? Actually, it's a promo box set, if you take damage of that, which includes a booklet with his discography and details about his albums, etc. to date, and three 12 inches. Now, in 1986, for some reason, the very first CD single in the world was John Martin's Angeline. You consider the things they could have released, but they chose this, um, and the track is here, included here. But what this actually contains, this, these three discs, are not the entire album in its, you know, it's just a selection of stuff. So you've got tracks from Solid Air, a track from Sunday's Child, a track from One World, and the two most interesting discs actually have dialogue before each track. So here you've got tracks from the Piece by Piece album with dialogue, and here you have dialogue with John Martin, Nightline from the album, and Dusty from the Tumblr, Less for Weather, and May You Never, which bizarrely is included twice. And over the labels, and they're all supposed to have a handwritten 33 on that one, which they have. Rare item, and if you're into John Martin, then uh, that might be up your street. Shown this a few times. This is a red fly of Tai Chai, blossoms everywhere, Chinese 10 inch. It was in David Bowie's like, top 100 records of all time on his list. Or oh, one of the records on his shelves, one of those things. Anyway. Uh, beautiful, beautiful stuff, even though it's sort of some kind of weird stuff when you like delivering public grain to the state. Now, I actually found three more of these, and they're not easy to come by. Obviously, they're Chinese tensions. But here's one Forward Our Great Socialist Motherland, with t track titles like Iron Will Changes Heaven and Earth. You know, it just sounds really mighty, you know. Uh, Song of the Geological Prospectors. Snappy. The Daring Women Electricians. This one is We Have Friends All Over the World with tracks like Albania, Our Close Comrade and Brother, and the snappily titled The Anti-Imperialist Contingent Advances from Victory to Victory, but the Creme de la Creme and the Piece de Resistance, and uh, the, the song title to end all song titles, the greatest title ever, is on this. This is a very militaristic uh, 10 inch we are forever a fighting force so you've got tracks on here like the liberation army learns from the people uh song of our liberation army army and people in, in union bound mending uniforms for our army i stand sentry for my great motherland but sandwiched between take up the revolutionary gun and we are forever a fighting force is the timeless camping trips are good Beautiful. Now I'm going to show a couple of albums here. I'm showing these and I'll tell you why. Uh, this is a great record. Fate's Warning, 1988, reissue of the 1984 uh, debut. It's like a thrash metal, though the singer sounds like an Iron Maiden. It sounds like Bruce Dickinson. Night on Bracken. Great record for me. I love that sound. Although as soon as the singer shuts up anyway, the music is just brilliant. Straight ahead kind of thrash. Um, at the same time, there's a whole bunch of metal albums. I picked them all up. Badlands, another rare, desirable on vinyl um, record. Good quality record from 1989. Sought After, as is this one. King Diamond's Conspiracy. I was hoping to like this, you know, at least give it a, I'll give it a go. See if it sounds like, oh my goodness, not my kind of thing. It's all stupid lyrics about goths and, you know, not goths as such, but death lyrics and all that stuff. Just stupid. Um, it seems that some people like it. But at the same time, amongst all of these metal records were these three albums. Traffic's Mr. Fantasy. Now, I've shown it before, but I gave my copy away as VCLT or part of VCLT to Leak in the US. And this is an original mono and it's in near mint. So, you know, I found that one 
two or three years ago I was out of the shop and uh, I have a replacement. Also found this, this is an incredible sounding record, the production is amazing, but it is Savoy Brown, Raw Sienna, quite a cheap record in America but not over here. It's uh, a stereo, you know, with a little cut out box, it's hoping it'd be mono. Again, absolutely pristine, but it's not for me, it's too, oh, it's just average, it really is average for me. Blues, rock, you know, it's, I can see where they're trying to go in places, but they're just, just like they're making up as they go along, I don't really know where they're going, you know, it's a strange, yeah, sort of record. But amongst it all was the absolute, I mean, eye-poppingly rare record, you know. This uh, Dr. Doctor Strangely Strange Heavy Petty with the ridiculous gimmicks cover. These don't fold into anything to protect them. Uh, so inevitably, there's a couple of small tears on this side. You find this sometimes without these flaps, you know, damaged, beyond all repair kind of thing. Uh, as you can see, it's a ridiculous design. Although the pictures themselves are quite interesting. Uh, it's acid folk. And I know that term gets bandied around, but it is borderline acid folk. There's a slight rockier elements here and there. Gary Moore that contributes lead guitar to a few tracks. Now it's on Vertigo Swell. And again, visually, look at this. Unbelievable. Not a scratch on it. It's actually a Joe Boyd production, but it's probably his worst production. On one of the tracks, uh, this is 1970, on one of the tracks with guitar, electric guitar, is just in one channel, and it's just, oh, by that time, you know, should have known better, and it's a bit muddy sounding in places. It's not the greatest album in the world, um, but what an amazing find. It goes for hundreds of pounds, of course, because of the Virgo swirl, etc., etc. But unfortunately, I was really excited, I showed it on Instagram, I was uh, really chuffed with it, and visually, like I say, but it actually has quite a fair amount of crackle and noise on it, nothing to overpower the music, but enough to distract here and there. So that was slightly disappointing. Now, I haven't cleaned it, um, but I found with some of the Virgo swirls, I don't have a huge number, but some I've found over the last two or three years just haven't sounded very good for UK Virgos. They've had surface sort of noise and they haven't, they've been a bit more crackly than you'd expect. And I always used to think of these as great pressings. You know, 30 years ago, they always sounded good to me. Maybe there's deterioration over time. I don't know. But it's just strange when it's such a visually eye-poppingly, use the word again, amazingly good looking record. I don't know, again, a German one would probably, yeah, it's a third of a price and probably wouldn't have the same issues at all. Because they were just amazingly well pressed. Now, I'm going to end on a classical record, so you might want to turn away. This particular record, you can tell sometimes when you look at a cover, can't you, that it's going to have something about it. Love that design. This is 1959. I've never seen this record, didn't know who this guy was. Although, funnily enough, in the same year, he pops up on this. I didn't realise he did. He lived into his 90s. Um, but didn't really record, there's not a lot of recordings of his stuff around. Now, why is this? It's because, and this is the only time I've ever seen this, there's a record dedicated to a bass vocalist, a bass singer. Obviously you get tenor, sopranos, baritones. And maybe that's why this record never m met full release. When this has been sold, it's only ever been a white label promo, or it's been in a proper label, like this one, but it has a factory sample sticker, like this one, with remnants of it. This actually was an, a library record from Hammersmith Public Library. Um, and they obviously didn't really know what to do with this guy. You know, it's interesting because on the rear, there's no biography at all, no information about him, which is very unusual for a classical record, especially if they're trying to promote someone. 
There's usually a bit of blurb about the singer. None of these feature words about the singer himself either, um, the Polish guy. Now it's interesting, and also another thing is the first track on side one is from an opera, an aria from Don Carlo. And there's three or four minutes of music before his voice even comes in. But when it does, wow, it's a fantastic piece of music. It's so kind of melancholic. There's, there's elements of sort of grief within the music. It's a wonderful, wonderful opening piece. It's a great record, this. It's a shame that it never really kind of took off. I suppose it's such a niche market. I mean, who wants to listen to a bass singer, you'd think? But actually, it's really good to hear them, or hear him, in this kind of setting when you just hear the arias written for bass. Now, I don't listen to a lot of opera, but this is a really, really nice record. And sometimes you can just tell. Quite a rare one. It goes for a bit of money here and there. But a uh, lovely looking thing. That design is just top quality. Anyway, that's it. I'll uh, leave you all there. See you later.